All right, Chiz, let's start with this. Your first initial reaction this morning when we all got the text and the news broke, Josh Heifel was the guy. I was surprised, PB. I mean, to be honest with you, I can't remember a time in recent memory where an athletic director has taken a job and then a week later hired the coach from, the, from his previous school. I've seen it as a couple of years go by, bringing a guy in that you know and you're familiar with, but bringing a guy from the school that you just left was unique to me. I know that the search was interesting. There was kind of a hush-hush. No one really knew what was going on. Uh, but I, I can't lie that uh, this kind of caught me off guard a little bit. Chiz, it's interesting, and we're going to talk to Chris Lowe a little bit later here and go through exactly how this coaching search went about. But ultimately, you know, the HBO show The Undoing, I don't want to be a big spoiler, but you kind of thought the obvious was going to happen. How was this not that more obvious to people that Danny White, being the athletic director of at UCF, says, hey, listen, I've worked with this guy. I know he could build offenses. I'm bringing him here to Tennessee. Well, again, in retrospect, you can look at it and say, well, it makes sense. The guy's averaged over 42 points a game ever since he's been there. I just think it was a, a different dynamic. You just don't see it happen very much where a guy literally takes his previous head coach with him. That being said, there were several other targets, uh, is from my understanding. Uh, and look, you don't know how these searches unfold. You can start out with a list of 10 and get down to number seven or eight quit. Not saying that Hypel was seven or eight. But these searches really unfold differently in, in, in every different place. You know, CD, when you start looking at Josh Heupel, what's the first thing that comes to mind of what he's going to be able to bring to this Tennessee squad? Well, I think Jiz and I have actually talked about this a lot throughout the last season. If you go back and look at what uh, Ole Miss did this year, Jeff Levy had formerly been at UCF. There's a lot of things that Lane Kiffin incorporated into his offense. Uh, because of the influence of, of Jeff Levy. So I do think you've seen a little bit of a blueprint of what uh, that type of offense can do in the league. But I do think there are some questions as well, as there rightfully should be. Josh Heupel was actually in this conference, in this division at Missouri a few years back, and those offenses were hit or miss at times. You'd like to think that he's evolved. I think the most important thing that Tennessee was looking for in general was an offensive-minded head coach. They get that in Josh Heupel. But the thing that they've been missing for the longest time is success and consistency at the quarterback. And Josh Heupel has done that uh, most recently with Dylan Gabriel. So I, I do think they have everything on the resume that uh, that Tennessee was looking for in, in terms of the most important aspects of, of hiring a head coach. Yeah, when you go back and look, it's not on Dylan Gabriel, McKenzie Milton. Uh, actually, he was over at Utah State and they found Jordan Love. He offered Jordan Love and now he became a first round draft pick for the Packers. And then go back and look at Drew Locke. And, and CD, when you go back to Missouri, Missouri in 2015, they were averaging 280 yards a game. In the first two years, they averaged 500. I mean, I'm not expecting the Vols necessarily to do that upcoming next year, but I would imagine you do see at least a pretty sizable uptick as far as offensive production. Well, you'd have to believe so. I mean, we're talking about two very different offensive styles with which uh, Tennessee's been operating for the last three years under Jeremy Pruitt uh, to what they'll be going forward to with Josh Heupel. But the good thing about it is go back and look at last year. What was the strength of that 2020 recruiting class? It was wide receivers. And a lot of those young guys had an opportunity to cut their teeth this year as freshmen. I think that will help them. Obviously, there's some serious work to do in terms of shoring up the guys' names that are in the transfer portal right now, bringing them back into the fold, and most importantly, perhaps, is, is finishing this 2021 recruiting class strong. We're a week away from National Signing Day next Wednesday. Uh, so that has to be uh, of utmost importance as well. There is no doubt, and it's something that Vol fans wonder, is he going to be able to recruit and pull those players into that program? Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.